So I'm the first person to argue defense of dark humor jokes because I have a dark sense of humor myself. But what we're about to deal with today and respond to today is beyond that. Specifically, if you haven't seen the documentary called Quiet on Set, it came out on HBO Max just yes, like uh, 24 hours ago. And there's a total of four episodes. And episode three was really, really horrific and emotional and rage inducing because of what Drake Bell experienced. For those of you who don't know, Nickelodeon is basically the the Epstein Island of television. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation and rumors and things that have behind the scenes of what has happened with Nickelodeon in the early 90s and 2000s. And this documentary not only confirmed it, but there's legal documentation and evidence to confirm of the things that actually happened behind the scenes. Um, Nickelodeon hired literally two um, pedos on their show, and one of them actually essayed Drake Bell, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but multiple times. Uh, and all the adults in the situation kept pressuring and pushing Drake towards this guy called Brian Peck. Brian Peck is a registered offender of diddlers, basically. Uh, and he only served 16 months in um, prison which is really horrendous. And then after he got out of the 16 months he served his time, he got hired by a Disney show working with kids again, despite the fact that he did a full-on confession towards Drake Bell and confessed and everything that this is what he did. Now, what's even more crazy in this whole situation and what this documentary reveals is that over 41 letters were written in defense of Brian Peck. So when Drake Bell at age 15 went to the courthouse and had half the room filled with all of these executives and uh, people in Hollywood defending Brian Peck, they all wrote approximately almost 45 to 50 different letters defending Brian Peck, despite the fact that he was charged, was being charged with um, violating and sodomy and 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 violation of a foreign object and all these horrific, terrible things. Uh, and he was found guilty. Again, Brian Peck confessed this. He did this horrible stuff to Drake Bell. And nobody did anything. All the adults in the situation just wouldn't listen to this 14-year-old boy. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And I feel so horrible for what Drake Bell had to experience. But what's even worse than that, okay, is that a guy by the name of Devin Workshire, um, who worked on a show called Ned's Declassified back in 2003 or 2004, I believe, on Nickelodeon. And the same day that this documentary was released, this idiot, this piece of shit Devin, literally said this on TikTok. Yeah, they laughed at me. Daniel, I told you. <laughs> Daniel, we told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel, and give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really shouldn't. This is awful. Why are we doing this? Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's f***ing awful. The, the, the Drake Bell shit is a, cr like, that's crazy to hear. I, I, that is f***ed, man. And that never came out, which is really wild. Really wild. I'll tell you who was talking about it. Boop. Boop. Ah. Uh. Okay. Oh, so y'all were in on it. Oh, God. Damn. Wow. I'm not talking about this anymore. No. no. Not no, talking no, about no, this no, anymore. No, no. Guys, we can't joke like this. Jesus. Guys, we're, we're, we're sometimes humor helps us move through things, yeah, you know? Yeah, 100%. We need Missy on the pod. Look, I'm the first person. I like dark humor, but this is not dark humor. There's a time and a place for dark humor and jokes like this. This is not a joke. You're literally making a reference to putting it in the holes when literally Drake Bell was essayed. And Drake Bell actually tweeted this out. And he's like, what the actual literal hell is wrong with you? And like so, like this is horrendous, man. But what's even worse, right? You have these idiots who are literally victim blaming and making fun of something that there is physical documentation and evidence of that this happened to a 14 year old boy, right? What's even worse now, all of these crazy renowned actors sending in letters defending Brian Peck when he was standing um, in court against Drake Bell. And this is so revolting. This is disgusting. I assure you, what Brian has been through in the last year is the suffering of a hundred men. I don't intend to victimize Brian, nor would I ever wish that, but I do feel compelled to shine the fact that he has learned his lesson. I'm sorry, you don't learn your lesson from 
SA, not once, not twice, not three, not five, not six times. Um, and every type of SA that there is, because there's different levels of SA of what people can experience, he did them all. Brian Peck did them all. This man deserves to rot. He deserves to go back into prison. And honestly, I hope he ends himself. I hope he puts a gun to his head and blows his brains out. Now, I know that's a really extreme thing to say, but this guy's a legitimate pedophile. Brian Peck can rot and he can die. Same with James Marsden. The fact that James Marsden would even defend this is disgusting to me. Not just that, but there's also even more. All these people are coming to his defense. There's a total of four different actors. The guy from Boy Meets World and two other actors that I'm not really familiar with, but regardless of that fact, they're in Hollywood and they put out statements defending Brian Peck, making Brian out to be a victim, and that somehow Drake Bell made Brian tempted. To do bad things blaming a 14 year old for the actions of an adult how screwed up is that how is that even the, the reality that we live in to where all these letters are literally blaming a 14 year old boy and claiming that a convicted pedophile has learned their lesson this is the reality that we live in right now how corrupt hollywood is and these people these actors who defended Brian Peck, who stood in the courtroom, deserve to be canceled to the fullest extent. I hope they feel so much guilt that they wake up and have a drug overdose, exposed down, down the line with the skeletons in their own closet for what they really do support, which is a pedophile. You really drew your line in the sand and you made it loud and clear. And you're not going to convince me that all 41 of these people who wrote letters on defense on behalf of Brian are all manipulated because some of these actors have come out and said, well, I was I was misled to defend Brian. No, you weren't misled. You chose to die on a hill which, and beneath that hill was a bunch of moles. Moles were digging the ground and you chose to stand on an uneven surface and fall into the pit of Brian Peck. You have defended you have made your statement in defense of an actual sex offender, and you deserve everything that happens to you. You deserve your career to be ended. You deserve to be canceled, and you deserve to all die. Literally, you deserve to go into prison and experience the full prison justice system on what they do to people who defend the violation of children. Is that extreme? Sure. Is that how I really feel? Yes. These people knew what Brian Peck had done, despite the even confession that was made. And they still chose to defend him. And if that doesn't say to you how corrupt Hollywood really is, then I don't know what does. Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Bow on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we Not only is this getting an absolute amount of backlash, as it should, but in this interview, the interviewee, the person asking the questions, is as biased as they come. This is literally somebody who works for Nickelodeon, who's somebody who's known Dan Schneider for years and is Dan Schneider's friend. So you have the friend of Dan Schneider, somebody who's working on a television show and a cast member or director, whatever he is. Uh, I guess he plays a character named Boogie, an actor. And yet he's the person asking these interview questions. Talk about one of the most biased interviews you can possibly have. And I watched all 19 minutes of this interview. It's linked down below in the description if you'd like to see it. But most of all, the most significant thing from this is that there's no accountability whatsoever other than Dan Schneider saying, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. Blah, 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 blah. It's a nothing burger. This is nothing except a forced scripted response. And you can't convince me otherwise. It is absolutely scripted. And... It's just crazy to me that Dan Schneider finally addresses the quote unquote accusations and allegations and does a terrible job at even responding to anything because it's not actually coming from a place of genuineness. It's not real. It's scripted. It's forced. This was planned. And at that point, you can't have something like this and not have it biased when the interviewee is literally somebody who works for you.